Friday night, it was raining like very hard. And we went to my grandmother's house. We took a couple of board games and different things. And then that Saturday um, morning, um, they told us to go back and get our stuff. So that's when we knew something was about to happen. At first, it wasn't as scary because we, like as kids, weren't really knowing what was all gonna eventually happen because we never seen it before. But when it happened, it became really scary. Once I seen the damage, that was like, that's it. <laughs> My money on the floor, this is what I work for and it's gone. And then how to actually explain, explain it to the kids. Like, we're not going back home. This was like, now you don't got no choice but to go. And then it was a day by day process. Most of us cannot imagine one day life is great and you have everything in place and the next day you don't know where you're going to live nevertheless your two or three or four kids some even maybe six so we still have a lot of kids that are displaced from their home whether living with um, loved ones or still staying in hotels um, in Rocky Mountain and Greenville essentially it's this helpless feeling that our kids are going through right now where you know and they'll verbalize I don't want to feel this way every time it rains and so I think that that's traumatizing that a natural event such as rain would be something that actually causes them an intense fear and anxiety um, so we talk a lot with the teachers about making sure that if a child does do a misbehavior that we're correcting the behavior and not necessarily the child and speaking to the kid to let them know that you know when you make this action this is the consequence um, but having kids feel more understood too of that we get it um, and just trying to teach our kids more to vocalize I'm feeling sad I'm feeling frustrated a lot of the time, if we don't have those feeling words, it just comes across as I'm angry. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, I don't think they are angry. I think that they're frustrated and confused because they've went through great loss. And then from an outside perspective, even though I live here in Tarboro, go to church here in Tarboro, work here in Tarboro, my home was not affected. Mm -hmm. And so there's a part of us that want to continue as business as usual. We know our kids are have an achievement gap and we're working really hard to close that equity gap. And it's difficult sometimes to balance in terms of how hard we're trying to push these kids. And the reality of the fact is just mentally and cognitively, some are not in a space where they can take on that additional stressor of business as usual. Um, October was terrible, um, scary to the point that we didn't know that Alma Square was going to be able to, to get through it. We were really fortunate that a local bank gave us a loan so that we could um, basically make payroll, pay vendors, um, but that's about it. And we struggled, we are still struggling. I guess the, the real tension between business owner and community citizen is, while the restaurant took a huge hit, it was nothing compared to what the folks of Princeville um, had happened to them with Lisa. We didn't lose our home, so. Um, you know, you're worried about your business, but at the same time, you're more concerned about these people getting food, water, shelter. So it's, um, you know, it puts things in perspective always. That was an impact on a lot of the kids. Because once a child get in that comfort zone and then they have to get pulled away, that's more on a child. They say it don't bother them, but you know at times it do. They kept a smile throughout the whole thing. Even though there were some days where I'm like, dang, I don't know where I'm going to get this. They smile the whole day, like, we're going to get through. So it it been a couple of rocky bumps, but we still made it. Some kids that didn't go through it don't understand it completely. And sometimes it can even be something to them that they might use as a disadvantage because nobody's perfect. And sometimes kids might pick on you because you stay in the hotel or because you don't have a home to go to. 
And to go through that situation knowing what has already happened to that person is hard. Because you don't want that person to go home or to that hotel and be upset because they don't have a place to live. And that's not their fault. Um, the people have left, the media has gone, um, and so families are still trying to put their lives back together. Even families who have homes right now, um, they have to furnish those homes. They have to furnish it from the front door to the back door. And their students or their children um, need clothing. And as seasons change, children grow. So those clothes that were given in October are not very helpful right now in May. And, and these clothes that will be given this May won't be able to be used next May. So for a couple of years now, they'll be through the cycle of trying to replenish. And even when it looks like um, they're settled, Still, it's going to take them a few years to get back to a good place. Um, and you've been thrust into this position, um, which kind of seems like things just keep piling up on you. So um, certainly we need to be mindful of their mental state um, and just how impactful um, this kind of process could be. I kind of look at a lot of things in phases. So if I had to look at the recovery process now, I would probably say phase 1A or 1B. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of people are still displaced. Um, I was speaking with a student that gets on the school bus at 5.55 a.m. Like, oh my God, you know, just, you know, still people in hotels. And again, it's different for every citizen. And I see that it is quite difficult even for my own mom to um, maintain what was normal before like going to work and doing you know her day-to-day -day, you know operations in her own life um, just shifting based on who she needs to meet with picking out different things you know to um, move forward and what the new structure would look like so there are a lot of factors Just be mindful that families have a long way to go and it's going to take a long time. And even though we're able to operate in school pretty much like we were, um, we're still, um, we don't have all that we had at Princeville, but we certainly can provide a good education. Um, and this is the school, but when they go home, they still have a lot of needs that are not met yet. Um. Specifically, you know, money becomes an issue. Um, everything in terms of transportation costs to our ADM changing and being held harmless and those kind of aspects. So I think that there's a lot that could happen in a response, but certainly as a proactive level. I think just engaging in kids cognitively in terms of the, how they come to school, they're not necessarily school ready. And if they had additional support in mental health, in guidance counseling, you know, K-12, I think we'd be in a much greater space. Um, for those that have resources and, 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 and again want to connect to what's happening here, I, I think this is worth a field trip. Um, not to, you know, not to just come and see, but to connect with, you know, what is reality. Um, the community has been shifted. We always need resources. Uh, money is the biggest resource. Um, some people need legal guidance on uh, how to navigate certain systems and, um, you know, get behind whatever the elected officials in Edgecombe County and the local municipalities, especially Princeville, what their goals are, work with them and not dictate what we need uh, or what should happen, but, you know, come in the sense of planning with us and not about us. That's my message. Whether you are an elected official, whether you serve in a position or capacity around this work that needs to occur to rebuild, that's my message. Don't plan about us without us. And so I think it's very easy as an outsider to assume that because the waters have now went away, we're okay again. Um, and the reality is that's just not the case. You can always help somebody that needs it and be understanding because you know, you don't know what somebody's going through. Sometimes the smallest thing can help all.